Hey everyone, how's it going? Container view controllers are one of those things that you can be working for a long time in iOS and not even know you're using them. I'm working on a new course and I've got a section dedicated to them, but someone in the channel asked for some help with some navigation and I thought I'd release this early. So if you're wondering what container view controllers are and how they work, uh, do enjoy this. I apologize because it's not a complete video. Uh, not everything's gonna make sense. But if you just want a high level overview of how these things work, uh, keep watching. And if you like the content, do hit like, do hit subscribe and stay tuned. And I'll be releasing a course on this and a whole bunch of more stuff around professional iOS development. All right, thanks for watching. See you soon, bye-bye. Hey everyone, welcome back. Okay, let's talk about these things called container view controllers, because this is a term that was very confusing for me. And even though I'd been using these things for many, many years when building applications, it wasn't until much, much later that I really understood what these things were. And that's what you're gonna learn in this section. You're gonna learn what container view controllers are, how they work. We're gonna look at some very commonly used ones, and then we're gonna see how we're gonna use those when we build our application. But let's start by just talking about what these things are. A container view controller is just a controller that combines and contains other child view controllers into a single working interface. Okay, so what do we mean by that? Well, here we have three very commonly used applications, YouTube, Spotify, and Starbucks. And in here, at the very bottom, you'll see these things called tabs. This is a container view controller. It's called the tab bar controller, and it contains view controllers that change depending upon what tab we click at the bottom. That's what we mean when we say container view controllers. Clicking these tabs here changes the views up there. So that's just one example of a container view controller. Another one is the navigation controller. For example, here we can see how YouTube will let you change navigation by selecting certain buttons at the top. Spotify has a detailed song that we navigated to from a playlist. And whenever you see that little back arrow there, you can tell that that's in a navigation controller because that will let you navigate back. And you can't see it here, but Starbucks has one too. It lets you select a tile here, drill deeper into the application, and then hit a back button and come back. So navigation controller is another container view controller we use and see all the times in our applications. And this is important because this is exactly what we're gonna be doing when we build our app. Here, when we build our account summary screen, we're gonna make use of that same tab bar that all the super popular applications out there use. We're gonna use it to select and change our view as they tap those tab bars. We're also going to use a navigation bar here when we put this in a table view controller. And this is what's going to let us drill deep into the applications to see some more details and then hit our back button and come back. So those are two examples of how we're going to use container view controllers to build this app. So that in a nutshell is what container view controllers are. Let's quickly review the most commonly used ones now, starting with the UI navigation controller. Okay, so you may already be very familiar with the navigation controller, and if so, that's great. But one thing I found a little bit confusing when first using it was I didn't appreciate there's actually two ways we can present view controllers on a navigation controller. The first is with push pop. This is very common. This is where you have a navigation controller. Maybe this red one is being displayed behind the scenes. When you go push, this new view controller comes on top. It's a full screen takeover and the old red view or the one behind the scenes, it's still there, it's just in the background. And it's when you push pop that the red one then comes back into the foreground and this blue one basically disappears. So that's push pop, that's one way we present using the navigation controller. The other way is with present and dismiss. Here it's a little bit different. Here we're not putting things onto a stack here, when we go present, this is a full screen takeover of this new view controller, and the old one is sitting behind the scenes in the back. So think of this more as, so think of this as more of a modal view controller where you're gonna ask the user to do something. They have to deal with uh, whatever it is you want them to do there, 
And only once they're finished that and they click OK or Cancel, then we call the Smiths. That view controller then disappears and the old one behind the scenes comes back. But it's a slight subtle thing. Just understand there's two ways of using the navigation controller. Push, pop, present, dismiss. And that's basically all there is to the navigation controller. In code, it looks like this. So in a repository, I'm just down under number four, container view controllers. I have an example of this. It's called the navigation controller demo. You can basically just pop that up and in here we can see how this is actually all working. So here in this example, we just have a view controller with a stack view and two buttons, push and present. And when you hit push, this is what pushes a new view controller onto the stack. And when we hit pop, it pops it back. With present, it's slightly different. Here when we go present, this is the modal takeover we're talking about. So here we have to deal with whatever it is we're doing uh, before we can go back. But once we fill out the form or done the work, we can dismiss and it brings us back. And basically just the only difference in how you present these things are the methods you call on the navigation controller. When you tap push, here we're grabbing our navigation controller and going push view controller. And here we're passing in the view, the new view control we want to push. And when present is tapped, here we're doing the same thing, only it's present, which we're presenting instead of pushing. And that's what gives us our different views for whether we push or present. And then basically to get rid of them, all we do is we either call pop to pop them off or we call dismiss to dismiss the view controller and go back to where we were. So that's just a little fun app you can play with. Go ahead and experiment with that. But those are the basic mechanics behind how UI Navigation Controller works. Next, let's talk about the Tab Bar Controller, probably one of the most commonly used container controllers out there. This thing is great. Here with the Starbucks app, we can basically see how different view controllers are created and presented for different buttons on the tab bar. And basically the way this one works is you associate each view controller with each button on the tab bar. And then when you tap it, it gets presented. Now what's interesting about this is you can actually make all sorts of combinations of view controllers in here. For example, this could be one view controller that's displayed in its entirety when you click home. This might be another view controller here, but this one might be embedded in a nav bar. So you could go deeper and drill further into the view and then come back doing all that nav bar stuff, that navigation controller stuff we just looked at. Now, these are really powerful controls. Uh, these are used all the time and in code they look like this. So here I am again in our project repo. This time I'm going to open up the tab bar demo and let's just quickly review how this one works here. So here I'm in the app delegate and I'm going to instantiate and create a UI tab bar controller right in here and then present that on the root view controller. And the way this one works is first you create all of the view controllers you'd like to present. Then we can associate with them tab bar items. These are some built in tab bar items that come with the tab bar search contacts and favorites. And we just assign a tag with them. You can think of this like an index zero, one and two. That's what represents each one of these as an index when we click on these different tabs. Once we've created the view controllers, we could put them directly into the tab bar. Or if we wanted to embed these view controllers in a navigation controller, we can do that too. Here we just take our view controllers one, two, three, embed them in a navigation controller one, two, three, and then we pass that as an array into the tab bar controller like this. Once we do that and present that, this container now knows and understands what to present when you click each of these tabs at the bottom. And here you can see it is basically presenting the search view controller, the contact view controller, and the favorite view controller, which we've gone ahead and defined down here. These don't really do anything. All they do is change the title. But this is basically one of the simplest examples you can come up with on how the UI tab bar controller actually works.
Now the UI page view controller, we've already seen how this one actually works. This is the one that we used in onboarding. Basically each one of these view controllers is presented in its container and these things are swipeable. So from a code point of view, basically we have a pages object, which is gonna contain an array of all the view controllers we wanna display. We set ourselves up as some delegates, create our view controllers, send them in, and basically just set that, or the view controller we wanna present, we view by basically choosing set view controllers. And that will basically swipe and figure out which one of these view controllers to present at any given time. In code, that looks something like this. In your repo, you'll find a page view demo, and if you double click and open that up, you'll find this simple example of a page view controller here. Here we just instantiate our page view controller, define an array of pages, we track the current view controller we're presenting, and then here is just where we set everything up. We instantiate our view controllers, we append them to the array, we decide which one we want to present first. In this case, we're going to present the view controller one. And that's basically it. The only other magic that sometimes comes in when using page view controllers is if you want to, you can choose to use the page view controller as the underlying view controller on your current view controller that you're in. By that, I mean this is how we add child view controllers to our existing view controller. And this is something sometimes we want to do, and in this case we do because this is a page view controller. We want to add it to the view controller we're in so we get all this neat stuff at the bottom, like these buttons, this UI page control uh, at the bottom here. But basically, that's all there is to it. We have our delegates that we need to sign up for, so we do need to tell the page view controller what page to present before and after. And here we have some convenient routines which go into our arrays and get the previous and next view controller from there. And that's basically it. Just return a count. And here are the view controllers we're presenting at the bottom, one, two, and three. But just a nice little example for you to play with. You can either tap on these buttons at the bottom. Of course, you can swipe back and forth. And that's all there is to the UI page controller. Okay, so that's a whirlwind tour of how container view controllers work. And I know I went over that a little bit fast. Don't worry, we're gonna build something slowly from scratch using the tab bar controller shortly. But these things are out there and it's just really important for you to know what these things are actually called. And at the bottom of the show notes for the container view controller section, I have two really good links in here where you can go read the Apple documentation on these things. This talks about the role of the view controller. And here you can talk about and see how view controller management works. And I do recommend reading these just so you can dive a little bit deeper and see how these things work. Here's one we didn't do, which is on the iPad only, the split view uh, controller. But basically it's got some more information in there and you can read about how these things work, how they get added, a little bit more about their life cycles. And it's just uh, really good reading for you to be aware of. So do for sure check out those two links in the show notes. Hey everyone, I hope you found that useful. I had a question in the channel about how to unwind some segues. Uh, and of course we can't unwind segues programmatically because we're not using storyboards. But hopefully that will help you if you are wondering how to dismiss view controllers, how to present them, how to use these things called tint containers. Hopefully this helps. And if you found this useful, uh, do hit like and subscribe and come back. I'm working on this and a course which is going to show you a whole bunch of more really cool, interesting stuff where we build a complete full load app professionally. And I introduce you to terms like container view controller and other things that are really going to help you when you're working professionally. So I hope that helped. I hope you're having a great weekend and I hope to see you soon. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.